Hello, good evening. Welcome to Calendar with Tina Gelder and Ian White. Yes, hello. Thank you for joining us. Here are tonight's main stories. Rioting in Rotherham, police make their first arrests after a far-right mob attacked a hotel housing asylum seekers on what's been condemned as a dark day for our region. It was ultimately a disgusting display of thuggery continuing well into the evening. Please be assured, if you were there, we will find you. I think anyone on a human level would find it absolutely disgusting what, what we were saying. But we can't allow a bunch of thugs to ruin our lives. And I've spent the day in Manvers as the community responds to last night's unrest and begins to pick up the pieces. Yes, we'll have more reaction to that night of violence in Rotherham shortly. Also coming up tonight... Life Lessons, how a tragic drowning at Scarborough is now helping children to stay safe this summer. I'm at Leeds Beckett University where all four of those medal-winning triathletes have trained over the years. And with a changeable week of weather ahead, we might be chasing that sunshine around a little bit. I'll have all the details later on in the programme. It's been condemned as a dark day for Manvers, the violence that erupted in South Yorkshire when asylum seekers were targeted by far-right thugs. Yes, six people have been arrested following the rioting yesterday as 12 police officers were injured defending a hotel housing migrants. Officers had bricks, a fence post and other missiles thrown at them, as did police dogs and horses. After largely peaceful protests in Leeds and Sheffield, disorder broke out when around 700 people gathered at the Holiday Inn in Wathapon Dern. Well, the violence has been condemned by the Prime Minister and the Mayor of South Yorkshire, and police chiefs have promised that further arrests will follow. Well, Adam Fowler has been there throughout the day. Adam, what is the atmosphere like now? Well, you can see behind me the area remains cordoned off and there's a police presence. Up above you can still see the uh, smashed windows from last night and down at the bottom there you can see the remains of a burned out green bin and the fact that some of these doors at the side have, have been boarded up this afternoon. There is a strange atmosphere here. People from the local streets have come to clean up and uh, sweep away the debris. Uh, one woman told me that, in fact, she wasn't in favour of the asylum seekers uh, being here, but even she said she couldn't condone the violence and thuggery uh, that she saw yesterday and that she was ashamed of it. And the people here doing uh, all that cleaning up on those streets say that this is the real spirit of Rotherham. It's this togetherness, but even then, it was occasionally punctuated by abuse from uh, being shouted from people passing in vehicles. This is my report on the story of what happened yesterday, which began around midday. Bins on fire and pushed into the doorway. Windows smashed. Oh, God, God, God. And South Yorkshire police targeted by chairs, pieces of wood, and even a fire extinguisher and table as a baying mob chants and films the violence. It's behaviour condemned by the Home Secretary as an utterly appalling, criminal and violent attack. In the cold light of day you can see the damage that's been done and inside officers carrying out their investigations. This now, of course, a crime scene. And outside here on the street, residents have come together to begin the cleanup operation. For the last two years, the hotel has housed asylum seekers. They've been evacuated and rehoused for their own safety. And now local residents have come together to repair the damage. Well, it's, it's just, it's, it's where we live, isn't it? So you want to help out when it gets destroyed. Could you tell us why you've come here today? My duty. <laughs> it's uh, we all we all live here, so this is this is this is our place. This is our planet. Um, we just need to keep it safe and you know band together. <laughs> yeah. They've been here two years. I was worried at first, but two years on, say hello, nod to them. I mean, absolutely, there'd be no bother to us on this estate. But the people thought they set fire to this estate because the refugees have been housed here. 
Last night's horrifying violence stretched the police as the mob targeted officers, who were outnumbered and at times appeared almost overwhelmed. Yesterday was a dark day and we know this was felt across our county. It was known there were people residing and working in the hotel, but the mindless individuals responsible had absolutely no regard for their safety. It was ultimately a disgusting display of thuggery continuing well into the evening. Officers have worked through the night to begin identifying those involved in these horrendous scenes. Please be assured, if you were there, we will find you. Some in the crowd filmed the riot. All windows are smashed, guys. All windows are done. Top windows are in there, look. Including the distressed faces of asylum seekers and staff trapped inside. The Prime Minister, Sakia Starmer, spoke after an emergency Cobra meeting this morning and said the faces in these crowds will be caught and punished. This is not protest. It is pure violence. And we will not tolerate attacks on mosques or our Muslim communities. So uh, the full force of the law will be visited on all those who are identified as having taken part in these activities. As darkness fell, the rioters were pushed back and some of the residents of this hotel allowed back inside. Others appeared at the windows, possibly in relief. This was one of several riots across the country. There was violence in Middlesbrough and Tamworth. And as fires burned in Rotherham and a relative calm followed the horrific scenes, six of the mob involved here have been arrested, more will follow and one has already appeared in court. Today, local MP and Defence Secretary John Healy appealed for those with information about the perpetrators to contact police. Do you believe that this violence was racially motivated? No, I believe this was an excuse for directed violence, vandalism, which is totally unjustifiable. And the fear that they cause for people in this hotel, staff and residents, the fear and shock for ordinary residents in this uh, estate around us is unforgivable. These are far-right attacks. These are far-right people attacking the most vulnerable people in our society. The far-right have always told people with little to attack those people with even less. And there is nothing patriotic about violence against the police. There is nothing heroic about coming and burning a hotel with 240 of the most vulnerable people in our society in it. There is nothing patriotic about that. Violence and hatred is not patriotism, and I reject absolutely any idea that it is. Last night's violence was carried out mostly by men, and in some cases, children. CCTV footage and body-worn cameras are among the evidence being reviewed, with the promise that those responsible will be identified and brought to justice. Well, we saw in that report an example of some of the worst elements of society, but today we've also seen an example of some of the best. And one of those people picking up a bin liner and litter picker was uh, Jasmine Richards here. Uh, Jasmine, why was it so important to you to come down and take part in all that? For me, it was important to restore a sense of normality to the community. We also saw how much mess was going to be left after the reports yesterday, and I knew that you know, it wasn't going to be down to just one or two people to pick it up. It needed a whole community, and that's what we did. We all came together. It's important to you for personal reasons as well, isn't it? Absolutely. My grandparents moved to the UK from India in the 70s, and my granddad was a GP before he retired. He gave his life to the community, and to have people fighting against people People who look like us, you know, Rotherham is a, is a, as a town and as a community is built on culture and diversity. For people to fight against that for no reason just makes no sense. It goes against everything that we stand for. So it's really important that we show them that we'll, this won't define us. What happened yesterday is not representative of Rotherham. The community spirit and the clean-up effort, that is what Rotherham is all about. How did you feel when you saw those images and also the fact that, you know, they're being broadcast across the country and around parts of the world as well? Absolutely. Rotherham gets a bad rep as it is. It's not known for being the most affluent town. And I think that what happened yesterday really didn't help that cause. We don't want people to think that we're all like that because we're really not. OK, well, thank you very much, Jasmine. You know, the violence is over for now. It's been condemned by local people and by the authorities. The hope now is that the community can now put that behind them and those perpetrating that violence can perhaps have a little think about what it is they think they've achieved. Yes, it's good to see things looking a lot calmer today. Thanks very much, Adam Fowler, there in Rotherham.
Well, after yesterday's violence, it's not surprising that the fear felt by those living nearby has spread to the wider Rotherham community. Muslims living in the towns say the unrest has brought back memories of far-right protests a decade ago and also the death of Mushin Ahmed, who was murdered as he made his way to prayers. Martin Fisher has more. Well, I'm here at the Milton Road Mosque at the heart of the community here in Rotherham. And joining me now is Abra Javid from the Rotherham Muslim Community Forum. Abra, first of all, you must have been shocked by those images yesterday. Yeah, uh, I think anyone on a human level would find it absolutely disgusting what, what we were saying, especially in your own hometown. Um, it's, it's a bit too, too familiar for us. I mean, 10 years ago, we suffered s similar issues when the far right came and we had 14 marches around 2014 where they were smashing up shops. They targeted mosques at that time. They were targeting women in town. Uh, and then we had the unfortunate tragic death of Mohsin Ahmed, which sort of led up from the marches. Uh, and unfortunately, that was the tragedy that happened in 2015. You have that experience then. So what did you take from that? to where we are today. How, did you have some sort of advice you could give really from those? Yeah, to be honest, even when back in 2014 when we had the far right marches, we were very much uh, in the thinking of uh, not really attending the marches. We, we said as a Muslim community that we will stay well away. We didn't want it because we were damned if we do and damned if we don't. And sadly, that's the kind of advice you've been having to repeat, is that right? Yeah, in fact, it's not even advice we were giving people were ringing us from the community, really concerned uh, about what's happening obviously nationally and what potentially could have happened in Rotherham. And there was obviously the protests at the hotel, but we, we feared there was going to be a spillover uh, and some of the, the breakout groups were going to come into Rotherham and target the mosques or target businesses uh, within our Muslim area. So we had you know, a demographic, we had women, elderly who uh, attend congregations at mosques ringing and saying, asking us, what should we do? Shall we attend mosques? Shall we go out uh, you know, to town? You know, it's summer holidays, can we take our kids to the park? So th there's real part of a fear of what could potentially happen. It's important to be aware and be vigilant and be careful, but we can't allow a bunch of thugs to ruin our lives and let us not go about our daily routine and daily business. This violence was only a few miles away from, from here yesterday. What would you say to the people that took part in that, whether they be from Rotherham or further afield? What would you say to them? If you've got grievances, and there may be genuine grievances or issues, whether it's on immigration or whatever it may be, do not associate yourself with those thugs who are blatantly out to cause disruption and who are just racist thugs looking for trouble. Yeah? Uh, I would say there's better ways of communicating and having meaningful dialogue with your communities because I feel like there's so much misinformation out there and people are taking that misinformation and turning it into facts. So if you've got grievances, don't misplace your grievances uh, by associating yourself with, this, with the far right because I know there's some good people in there who generally want to speak about certain concerns or issues they have. Abra, thank you very much. So as we've, as we've heard, tensions and fear still very much a part of the community in Rotherham today. Martin, thank you. Well, earlier we saw the South Yorkshire Mayor Oliver Coppard helping with the clear-up operation in Rotherham and I caught up with him shortly afterwards when he was back at his office in Sheffield. I began by asking him how all of this can be fixed. Well, look, obviously over the coming days what we'll see is a ramping up of the arrests that the police will be making and a, a number of prosecutions I'm sure so in terms of the policing response there will be more police on the street particularly in places like uh, Mambas and Wath uh, but more broadly as a community we absolutely of course need to come together I've said myself you know not just as the mayor of South Yorkshire but everyone in South Yorkshire needs to reach out to their friends their neighbours strangers uh, and make sure that everyone's okay and we all have a responsibility to do just that to bring our communities together. You talk about uh, wrapping up the protests, wrapping up the arrests, but we've heard that there could be more protests in the coming days. How are you fixed to deal with this? You're the man with responsibility for the, uh, uh, how effective South Yorkshire Police is run. How are you going to deal with this if it happens? 
Well, look, obviously the police make operational decisions and that's absolutely right. They are operationally independent, but they are ramping up those arrests as we speak. They are dedicating a whole team to making sure that they are going through the body-worn footage, the CCTV footage, the information from the helicopter, from the drones. There's a huge amount of information that they now need to comb through. And as they identify those people that were part of that violence yesterday, they will then go and find them, they will arrest them, and they will prosecute them. And I hope anybody who is thinking about carrying on that violence in our communities will see that if you carry out that violence in South Yorkshire, the full force of the law will be on your head. And that is absolutely right. Is it time to call in the army? Look, I'm not here to call in the army. The police are the people in charge of this operation. And right now they are going through that footage. They are making sure that they are ramping up those prosecutions. We've seen that in Wath, it is now quiet. We have seen 100 volunteers out on the streets this morning. I was down there with them myself, cleaning up, looking after people, making sure that everybody's OK. That's where we are right now. And long may that continue. Now, uh, you talked about people in the area coming together. We've heard already today, earlier on in the programme, from Abra Javid from the Rotherham Muslim Community Forum saying elderly people, women are calling him, afraid to take their children to the park, for goodness sake, afraid to go to mosque. This is being repeated with people we've spoken to today, people afraid to go out on the streets on which they were brought up, their streets. How can you make them feel safe? These are all our streets. Everybody deserves to feel safe, to feel welcome, uh, to not be concerned about the safety of their friends, their family, their loved ones when they leave the house. And that's what the police are there to do. And I know what they are doing. They are absolutely out in force right across South Yorkshire, but it's also incumbent upon all of us, everyone in South Yorkshire, indeed everyone across the country, as I say, to reach out to friends, to family, to strangers, and they understand that we are all part of one community, and here in South Yorkshire, we look after each other. That is what we do. Oliver Coppard, the South Yorkshire Mayor, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you. Well, after calendar, the ITV Evening News continues at 6.30 with the disorder scene here and further afield dominating the headlines. Here's Mary Nightingale. Coming up on the programme, cities across the UK recover after a weekend of riots. The Prime Minister has called an emergency Cobra meeting to tackle the violence a week after the Southport stabbings. We'll have analysis and reaction from across the country. Also on the programme, an exclusive report into the worrying rise in the number of fires caused by the conversion of traditional bicycles into electric versions. And we get the latest from Paris, including controversy for Team GB in the triathlon. Well, do join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Thank you, Mary. Well, next tonight, as the warm weather continues and people flock to our region's coastal resorts, the sea is very inviting, but it's important to know how to stay safe. In Scarborough, one woman whose brother drowned off the coast nine years ago is running swim-safe courses for children to prevent a repeat of the tragedy her family went through. Sally Simpson's been along to see what's going on. On a sunny day in Scarborough, there's nowhere better to be than the beach. But while the sun, sand and sea are there to be enjoyed... Then we're going to push the water away towards our feet. These youngsters are also learning important life-saving lessons. Aimed at 7 to 11-year-olds, the Swim Safe sessions show children how to respond to challenges in the water, including rough seas, rip tides and the cold. It's a tie-up between the RNLI and Swim England and was set up nine years ago by Donna Loveland following the death of her brother Andrew, who drowned off the South Bay while trying to rescue his dog. Because Andrew drowned, I wanted to, him to have a long-lasting legacy and his death to have some important impact. And by teaching these children, it teaches all different generations, not just the children that are learning it. And we're teaching such an important message. It's um, an amazing thing to be part of. I think it's a, a lovely thing for our family to be doing. And it, it just feels like we're giving something back. Just stay nice and relaxed. Some 8,000 children have already benefited from the scheme, with dozens more taking part this week and next. They'll come down here a little bit nervous, a little bit scared. But hopefully when they uh, leave our session, they've got life-saving skills that hopefully they can keep for the rest of their lives. Tell all their friends, tell all their families. 
For those involved today, it was a chance to learn and have fun at the same time. I thought it was really good because I like learning about all the different manoeuvres that they do in the lifeboat station. And I like, like laying on your back because it like, makes you feel really safe. How much did you enjoy that? I enjoyed it very much actually, but like the, the good thing about it is when I can go out to sea, I can now learn how to stay safe if there's strong currents or strong waves. I learned like what different flags meant and um, when they're flying, um, what they mean and if you need help you call 999. Practice on land first, then we did it in the sea, and it just made me a bit more confident to go in the sea with my brother and sister. And it's passing on that essential message to future generations that the Swim Safe team hopes will help everyone continue to enjoy the beach and avoid further tragedy. Sally Simpson, ITV News, Scarborough. It's a great idea, that, isn't it? Yeah, such an important skill to learn. Absolutely. Isn't it? Now then, uh, let's take a trip into Europe now and to the Olympic Games in Paris, where, surprise, surprise, our region was once again amongst the medals this morning. Yes, the Great Britain triathlon team took bronze in the mixed relay and all four members of that, of that team have connections to Leeds. Well, we can now join Chris Dawkes, who's at Leeds Beckett University for us this evening. Chris. Yes, Tina, I think we can say that medal was made right here in Leeds. As you say, all four members of that mixed triathlon relay team have some connection to Leeds Beckett University. And conditioning coach down here, that's Dane Mitchell. And Dane, thanks for talking to us. Now, tonight you would have been training with Beth, wouldn't you, down here? But of course she's in Paris. Will she be happy with that bronze medal, do you think, today? I really hope so, because an Olympic medal, in fact, she's got two now in she one has. Olympics is incredible absolutely incredible so i hope that sinks in and she's really happy with you know her progress through the sport's been immense from being in a you know a different sport completely being a, a track and field athlete to now being a an olympic medalist in triathlon is incredible it's such an exciting race wasn't it and i mean you're going to be excited tonight as well because another one, <laughs> athlete that you train here at leeds beckett keely hodgkinson who's the i suppose she's the poster girl for team gb this year going in the 800 meters she's got a massive chance of a gold medal tonight hasn't she yeah if she um if she executes how you know what she's capable of then yeah anything anything's possible really she's in phenomenal shape physically mentally emotionally so ready for her to and you know that because you've spoken to her today, haven't you? You exchanged messages? <laughs> yeah, just a couple of texts, <laughs> nothing, nothing too much. Don't want to bother her too much while she's prepping, last minute prep, but um, she's, she's, she's ready, she's ready. And yeah. a gold medal on the track would be fantastic, wouldn't it, for Team GB? Oh, mm -hmm. incredible, incredible. Big pressure on, big pressure on Keely, everyone, but if there's one person that can, can handle it, it's, it's Keely. Fingers so, fingers whatever she does, we'll be, be super proud of her. Fingers crossed, Dan, we'll let you crack on. Thank you so I'm much. I've a lot. Like, I rarely seen my mates. Uh, I haven't really gone out too much either. It's just been training every, pretty much every single day for the past 12 years. It's, it's, it's all gone into this. 12 years of hard work all into one bit of metal here. So, yeah, this is this just sums up, really. Well, we'll be glued to the screens here tonight, watching to see if Keeley can bring home that gold medal. Good luck, too, to Katie Marchant from Leeds in the cycling the women's sprint. She's in the final two. Oh, Chris at Leeds Beckett University, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll be uh, watching the Olympics tonight. I don't know if you saw Louis yesterday, but my goodness, he put in the race of his life <laughs> against those amazing sprinters. It's, uh, it's all good to watch at the moment. Oh, no. Well, let's uh, wish Keely and uh, Katie all the best tonight as well. Now then, let's get the weather forecast from Job Live. Good visibility on the horizon. Tui. Sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Hello, good evening. A fresher feel to our weather over the next few days. Today has been very humid, but temperatures will be returning to around average through the rest of the week. Bright spells to come, but also a few showers. Low pressure is very much back in the driving seat, pushing fronts in across the UK as we head through the next few days and nights. And for our part of the world, nothing too much to worry about. Slightly more cloud than we'd like, probably, and a fresher feel in the run-up to this weekend. 
Back to this evening's details and over the last few hours cloud really has been building and from the west overnight tonight some rain beginning to nudge in. By the time it reaches the Dales and the Pennines it's beginning to become a little bit lighter, fragmented as it moves eastwards towards the North Sea coast before tomorrow morning. But it will leave behind low cloud, mistiness, a few fog patches and relatively light winds as we head through tonight and into tomorrow morning. Another warm night for sleeping, 16 or 17 Celsius for most places. On to tomorrow's details. First of all, the sun will be up at 5.30 and sets at 8.53. Quite a cloudy start to tomorrow, giving way to bright spells. Some showery rain south of the Humber initially and perhaps one or two heavy bursts on a few showers there at first. But for the bulk of Yorkshire, a dry day and feeling quite pleasant into the afternoon. Noticeably fresher at around 21 or 22 degrees at best. With a good deal of cloud bubbling up, but bright or sunny intervals will get out through the course of the afternoon and it will be dry to end the day with very light winds for our part of the world. Looking ahead to the next few days or so, pulling in more cloud for north of England with some rain perhaps around on Thursday. Average temperatures and still pretty warm by night. Bye bye. TUI sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Thank you, Joe. Well, it'll be duvet on, duvet off again tonight, I think, won't it? But that's it uh, for now from us two. Yes, I don't want to know what goes on in your house at night. Thank you very much. <laughs> too that's much information. Yes, uh, I'll be back with our late news at 10.30. Hope to see you then. <laughs> Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>